when I was in school was that, you know, during the 08, 09 crisis. So I like fell, fell in love with like what was happening in Wall Street and trying to figure it out and saying like, you know, how can I help people, you know, normal investors invest mm. the right way? And that's been like my whole mantra, you know, since the beginning. So as I was going through school, I wish I had like your book, for example, that would teach me how to get like a debt-free <laughs> degree and all that stuff. I didn't, I didn't have that. I didn't know how to, um, you know, graduate from school without having all that, um, all the debt that I did incur. So I was going and I was going to a student aid office. I was negotiating with them. I was begging for money. I was working these odd jobs. I was selling plasma. I was cutting hair. I was refereeing. I was doing anything I possibly could in order to afford school. Selling and, plasma? Yep. AKA blood? Blood, yep. Your blood? Selling blood, yep. My siblings still make fun of me until today, but I'm like, I had to put food on the table. I had to eat. I had to pay for books. Wow. Like, you guys didn't have the bread, so I had to figure it out. So, um, but yeah, I was doing everything. I was <laughs> running my own business. Um, I was owning, uh, running my own barbershop business out in my dorm bathroom. So I'll have clients come in like every Saturday and I would just cut all Saturday. And I'll use that money in order to pay for whatever I needed to pay for for school. But I knew one thing, I was gonna graduate within four years, mm. no matter what. Did you graduate? Oh yeah. What'd you graduate with? Economics, business economics. Business economics. Yep. How much debt did you graduate with? Uh, $50,000 in debt. $50,000 in debt. Was it, so was that an in-state or out-of-state school for you? In-state. In-state. Yeah, $50,000 of student loan debt, and then I had car debt, had credit card debt. That was the hardest part, credit card debt. The credit card debt. Oh, yeah. What did you spend on your credit card? I'm curious. <sighs> Everything. I was that kid where we would go out, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to swipe the card. And, and you mean, I'm, everybody. I, you know, you want shots? No problem. I just wanted people to have a good time. No, I'm with you. you. Know what I mean, so you. I was like, uh, you don't got the bread. I'm make sure you know, you know, have a good time, whatever. Um, going out, buying clothes, shoes, whatever. Because you know, I wanted. I was in a stage in my life where I felt like I needed to impress. Yeah. Um. So I was just going, doing whatever. Um. And then next thing you know, I had ten thousand dollars of credit card debt. Mm -hmm. um, again, similar to your story, mm -hmm. I was going and I was getting these credit cards because they were like, oh, like we're going to give you free pizza and T-shirts, right? That's I'm like, it. bet, sign me up. Sign me no up. problem, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then luckily at a certain point, they cut me off and they said, like, you can't get any more credit. I'm like, what? Like, why Why can't I? Right. right. Um, this is free money. Why are you not giving it to me? <laughs> um, so I was just swiping the card and, and praying that one day I'll, I'll pay it off. But... Yeah, so you know, throughout school, just did all these different odd jobs to make sure that um, that I can you know pay for school. But the reason why I was able to get into finance is because I was able to spend my entire story to these recruiters and said, because you know, like I'm going to these recruiters at Vanguard. A lot of these people, they come from money. Mm -hmm. They they come from multifamily homes and all this stuff. And they would sit down and be like, Hey, like, tell me your story. I tell them the story, and they'll be like, Oh my God, like you've been. You've been through a lot. And for them, they're like, oh, you have, like, the intangibles. You have the grit. You have the willpower. Um, you know about personal finance. You know how to make things work. You know how to talk to people. And when you're coming out of school, that's what they want to see. Yep. So I talked to a recruiter. That recruiter passed me on to another recruiter. Next thing you know, I'm working at Vanguard in one of their um, – top programs. Um, it's called the Vanguard Accelerated Development Program, where mm. they only choose 20 people out of the country to work at Vanguard, and the goal is for you to become senior management within 10 years. And you were selected for the program. And me, from the hood, <laughs> was selected for the program, and I'm with other kids that were you know, from private equity fund families, like one kid, um, his mom was, or his dad was a hedge fund manager, and I'm having conversations with them, and they're like, oh, like, what's your family? What do they do? Like, oh, my, my dad passed. He worked in a warehouse. My mom worked in a prison. She's physically disabled. Um, and I'm here to show you guys that I can run circles around anyone. <laughs> 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 so they, they love that. They love that. So well, man, it's a lot of fun. Circles around all y'all rich people. Right. Yo, that's crazy. So, but that's how I got in. That's how you got into the finance world. Yep. Then next thing you know, I'm a licensed stockbroker, and then finally became a licensed financial advisor. Just just starting there. And how much debt were you in around that time? Um, and well, when I graduated from school. No, I'll say right around the financial when you, when you start when you became a, a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so at that time, I started nipping away at a lot of my debt. So I still probably had like forty to fifty thousand left in total, in total of student loan debt and car debt and credit card debt. Because mm-hmm. it took me a while to get my act together. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't until maybe two thousand seventeen, like after I left Vanguard, where I said, you know what, I'm going to take control of how much money I'm bringing in. And I'm also going to I'm going to do offense and defense, right? So I'm going to make sure offensively I'm bringing in enough money. And then defensively, I'm going to make sure I'm budgeting and paying off debt. Mm-hmm. Um, and luckily, the combination of those two helped me to pay off debt by 2020. So you're completely debt-free today? Completely debt-free. Let me ask you this question, though. Why do you believe financial freedom and having no debt is the best route to go for you personally? For me personally, I knew that I woke up every day with anxiety knowing that I had debt. Mm. I owed someone else. Mm. I didn't want to be in a position where I owed anyone for anything. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't want to be in a position where anyone could take anything away from me. Everything I have today, no one could take it away. No Mm. one could take away your degree. No one could take away my my business, like all those things. So for me, I wanted to become debt-free um, to to have that freedom to basically say, hey, like I can work on my own terms. I don't have to worry about paying back the man. Um, and it also kind of went along the same vein of make sure I, I decrease my expenses to a point where I can start my own business. Because yeah. what people fail to realize is that when you start your own business, the paycheck that you're getting month after month is based off of the expenses that you occur month after month, yep. right? So like if you're able to lower that threshold, and let's say it's only you only need three thousand dollars a month, then that means you only need to bring in, in theory, uh, three thousand in order to break even. Mm-hmm. Um, likely you need more than that because of taxes and all that stuff. But that's not a conversation. Yeah. Um, but that that was my whole mentality. I said, hey, like I want to work on my own means. I want to have my own company. And frankly, when I was at Vanguard and I was working in private equity and I was working in fintech, I told myself I can do it better myself. Ooh. I can help. I can help the people that look like me go off and become millionaires and multimillionaires. But what I was doing when I was at Vanguard and when I was at, you know, when I was, you know, a stockbroker and a financial advisor was I was making millionaires multimillionaires, but not helping the people from where I'm from invest. So that's where Better Wallet truly started. Yo, I, I, bro, bro. You just said something that I, I want to make sure that people heard. You are helping millionaires become multimillionaires, mm-hmm. but you were not helping people who look like you and I become millionaires. Right. And I think that is so, so important to understand to people, to why do, why do people like you and I have a passion for our community? Because we are not even becoming 100,000 heirs. Mm-hmm. It was on, I got it right here on my computer. Um, it, it's the, uh, hold on, it's the McKinsey and Company um, uh, company. They came out with this uh, study two years ago called the, the Economic State of Black Americans, mm-hmm. what is and what could be. They do this study every three years. Mm-hmm. And they say that the average, not the average, less than 50% of, or 48% of black men are gonna make $38,000 a year. Wow. You know wow. what I'm saying? Like. People who look like you and I, that, that's almost half of black men yep. are going to make below poverty, mm-hmm. $38,000 a year. And then it said the other side will make about $48,000 a year, but then only 7% of black people will make over six figures. Wow. And then here you are saying, you know, I can help my people go from 38000 to 100000 to a half a million to a million. Mm-hmm. But it's so funny how you're right. The millionaires are becoming multimillionaires. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I realized that during uh, times where the market wasn't doing all too well, and I would get calls from the multimillionaire saying, like, I, I my life is in danger. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm in a crisis because the market's not doing well and I'm losing money. And I had to think about it. I'm like, what problem am I solving? I'm helping them with tax strategies. I'm helping them build their portfolio. I'm helping them with just trying to um, limit the volatility within their portfolio. And I'm like, but am I actually helping to solve the challenge that's at hand? Mm. Um, the wealth gap, right? Like mm. I talk about that heavy on my on my page because it's so important. And I was like, am I helping to widen it or am I helping to, um, you know, 
bring it bring it in or let mm. it just, you know, shorten it. So from there, I started working on what I call my pandemic project, which is Better Wallet. And then from there, it, it took off from there. So you find one person that needs some help, you find two people, you find 100,000, you find 200,000. And it's been going from there.